Hello, we're back now for the third in our daffodil painting tutorials and today we're going to be looking at watercolours. Just getting organised, getting some paints and brushes out. Now I don't know if you can see on the paper before me, this is, this is, this is a fairly fine grain watercolour paper. Uh, and on there, I have actually already done a very, very light sketch of where I'm planning to put my daffodil. I've stuck with just the one bloom and a few leaves at the moment. And working up the lightest of the yellows. The outline is just a guide to give me a little bit of confidence as to where I'm going. And starting with the yellow, the lightest of the yellow paints that I've got. One of the things that is really fairly crucial with watercolours is to identify where your highlights are going to go fairly early on in the painting because it's a lot more effective if you can just leave the lightest of your highlights uh, plain white paper. Uh, it sort of gives the finished painting a sort of glow. So I'm being really careful to leave areas of highlights on the leaf there pulling in the lightest yellow colour. Uh, constantly moving in the direction of the leaf, so from the base of the leaf out towards the tip. Uh, slightly darker on the outsides and on the undersides. Now the sunlight in this picture very much in, as in the other daffodil paintings is coming from the top left hand corner so we will have corresponding areas of light and dark as highlights and lowlights. And as you build the picture up, it's quite a good idea to live, leave more highlight than you're expecting so that you can actually uh, build it up if you feel you need more colour somewhere rather than try and lift it out. It is possible to lift colour off the page, but it's never quite the same. OK, so I'm speeding this up a little bit because we're going around the flower doing the same exercise. Uh -huh. And there we go, the last two leaves going in there, and we've got them all. Okay, so now we're moving on to the trumpet section. Uh, now it's a little more tricky this, but this is the little lacy section. Now I'm putting in, actually, here what will effectively be a shadow on the inside of the trumpet, just behind the top of the frill. Um, but ultimately, when I do the wash at the end, I will leave a little white edge between the yellow and the blue sky behind, which will actually be the, the real highlight trim on that. But you can't see it at this stage because I haven't painted it yet. There we go, going down into the centre of the trumpet, um, pulling the paint down into what will be the deepest part of the plant. Again, constantly moving the paint in the direction uh, that I want the eye to be drawn. So I'm now moving on to a darker yellow here, building up not only the depth of the colour but the low light areas again. Once again we're speed painting here, but don't rush, enjoy it and take your time because that's what this is all about. Again, I'm going in with yet another darker orange, building up the depth of that trumpet and drawing the eye down in to give the whole picture a three-dimensional 
element to it. Really, we keep working round and doing similar exercise with different layers of colour and build up the strength of the colours. Each layer brings a little more depth to the painting as a whole. And don't worry if things don't quite turn out the way you anticipated. something about daffodils, they're so bright and cheerful. It was lovely this morning out on my morning run to try and get a little bit of exercise. Fortunately we're in the middle of the country so there's not very many people around so I didn't have to worry about uh, social distancing particularly. But there were so many lovely daffodils and this bright yellow against the green just gorgeous. Okay so I'm going to leave the main flower now and move on to the rest of the picture. We've got the bud in the corner there and then onto some green, slightly different colour now. Now I'm starting with a very very light green but I'm still just picking out where I'd like these leaves to go. Now don't forget you can actually move the painting round if it would be easier to paint it at a slightly different angle. The important thing with watercolours is to be able to pull the paint into the direction that you want it to travel. Long sweeping motions are very good. Okay, uh, in order to make the stems and the leaves look more three-dimensional I'm putting darker areas in. We forget, we've got to remember again those highlights and lowlights. Uh, and eventually I will move from the light green into a different green, more of a sap green, which will bring a darker concept again in. So there we go. Now that's a little bit too dark. So what I'm going to do is uh, take some of the colour off it and then go back in and move the paint around. While it's still wet it's very flexible uh, <clears throat> and there we go that, that gives it that gives the stem more of a three-dimensional three feel because you've got the darker line in the shadowed areas. So we're going to work that sort of concept around the rest of the, the greenery. Making sure that the whole picture is balanced. but remembering to leave those crucial highlights. This sap green is quite a useful colour actually. Uh, very versatile. Always brilliant for any sort of paintings of vegetation. But I like it in combination with the light green. Because the light green does lift it, and give it that fresh new growth feel to it. It is lovely to see the spring developing in spite of the fact that we are living a different life than we would necessarily want to at the moment. But the world is still out there and the seasons are still changing.
few extra colours going in there. Now I'm also adding, it's not so easy to see on the video, but a very, very slight touch of the green in those shadowed areas, in the very depth of the flower. Uh, and that's really quite effective to give it a little bit more of that three-dimensional element and pulls the flower and the stems together. Now the tricky bit now uh, is going to be the background. Uh, because obviously we couldn't put a blue background down and then paint the yellow on top. It just wouldn't work with watercolours in the same way that it does with acrylics. However, I'm not very good at putting washes on. Um, in many cases, I would be tempted to just leave this as it is. Washes can get incredibly messy. Um, but the trick is, I think, to make sure that you've got plenty of the colour that you're going to use made up ready. You can see I've got a little puddle of blue there. And then once you start, you need to keep it moving. You need to keep it wet and keep it moving until it's all on. And then you need to just leave it to dry. Uh, and that's the point where I tend to start fidgeting with it and I always regret it later on. So I've started in with the point. The brush is loaded with plenty of blue. Turning the page as I pull the blue wash round, making sure to keep it very wet, going into, into the small areas with the point of the brush, dragging round, just keep moving, trying not to have a break, <clears throat> not always easy, okay putting a bit more water over there to keep it wet while I come back and drag this bit round up to the point. More paint again. We're nearly there for this section of the painting anyway. I'm pulling it down in the direction I want it to go as close to the rest of the flower as I possibly can. Now, there we go. <clears throat> now, it does look tatty, but we're just going to let that dry, filling in the other areas similarly. You can see that some of it is bleeding and it's a bit patchy, but I suppose in some respects that just adds an extra dimension to the painting. Um, now it does buckle up when it gets wet like this. Uh, please don't panic, just leave it to dry and it will flatten itself out. On the whole, uh, I don't think that's too bad. Well, I think that went reasonably well. Uh, I hope you think so too. Um, it's been really nice to have you joining me in the shed, in the garden, at the house that sat down. I'll look forward to seeing you next time.